adults and a few children have agreed to meet the explorers. It is 1.48 p.m. when Dutilleux first sees the Tulambi. The footage you are seeing is unedited. The only addition is the voice of Jean-Pierre. According to Huawei, they don't believe that the white man exists. But if they do, that makes me one of the living dead. When I lose my balance, they seem a little reassured. Ghosts don't fall, I guess. At this precise moment, I'm convinced that he's going to let loose his arrow. Maybe he wants to see if it will pass through my body or not. I feel it's important to show them my peaceful intentions. Michel, my assistant, has kept the remaining porters away from the scene. And Philip, the cameraman, is hiding about 60 feet behind me. He sees Philippe, who must look like a strange creature with an eye of a camera instead of a human face. Philippe has been on previous expeditions with me, and he knows these stone axes have deadly weapons.
After the sold, I show him matches. He burns his hand, as if he can't believe this is real fire. This feels like a meeting in a time war. Perhaps these two lambi, with their wooden spears and stone axes, are the living ancestors of we, who have learned to fly without wings, talk with the stars, and destroy our own planet. It is not a case of once bitten, twice shy. The bravest warrior wants to know more about the gift of fire sticks from one of the living dead. But he discovers the phosphorus on the matches tastes awful. The gift of instant fire seems to convince the Tulambi that Dutilleux, living dead or not, is socially acceptable, or at least is no immediate threat. With what may be one of the oldest gestures of humankind, the right hand, the weapon hand, is offered in greeting. The Tulambi look at Jean-Pierre's pale skin as if it could be paint. But would the living dead be warm, made of flesh and bone and muscle, just as they are? It seems like the Tulambi have never seen a white man and that they're finally prepared to believe their own eyes. The long, soft hair of the Caucasian is clearly another wonder of the world. Jean-Pierre now offers the Tulambi their first matches, but they have no idea how to use them. Following the example of explorers of centuries past, Dutilleux tries to win over the natives with a mirror. They have never seen their own image, except as a trembling reflection in rivers and pools. Is it an evil eye? A trick of the living dead? Either way, it cannot be investigated without due caution.
And then a knife. Stone Age men short circuiting evolution, leaping in the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, to reach the age of steel. The Tulambi remain weary, but decide to accept Jean-Pierre's hospitality. Metal plates, pots and pans are another wonder. Rice is totally unknown. Sanjuga inspects it suspiciously. And Gio doesn't like the rice at all. But he changes his mind when I add salt. I'm concerned when Angio begins hitting his head. It turns out to be Tulambi body language for good. When Angio does it, it is a signal for the others to try the rice. Instead of the customary scoop-shaped leaf, Jean-Pierre offers Sanjuga a spoon, but it's the rice that inspires all the head-banging. <laughs> The modern idea that form follows function, that the design of the spoon will dictate its proper use, is obviously not self-evident. They soon forget the spoon and prefer to eat their usual way. My cameraman, Philippe Bottiglione, can now get close to individuals without their paying any attention. They have grown accustomed to his face with its cyclop eye of the camera lens, and so pay no attention to him as they investigate the mystery of my camp. Then Jean-Pierre gets down to work. As always in this type of situation, he uses a rudimentary show-and-tell session to begin to understand the Tulambi language. How do, you, how do you call the house? Anga? Anga? Anga. Anga. How, how, how do you call the grass skirt? This? Aiga. 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 And the necklace, the necklace. Nungwa. Necklace. Nungwa. No. Nungwa. Kamke. 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 Aiga. Aiga. Ange. 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 Sa. 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 No. No. Sa. Sa. Sleep. 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 Ah. Okay. Okay. Jean-Pierre will later give the tape to linguists. 
They will hear a language and songs never before heard by modern man. <laughs> In his journal, Jean-Pierre Dutilleux writes, You know, it all happened this way, but I still cannot believe what we saw. I must continue my research and I will return to find out whether I was dreaming or not. Minutes later, the bridge across the ages was swept away.